So hello Marco, when is the first time that you actually heard metal music or you re recall hearing metal music? Yeah, I probably have heard it before, but uh, with the real purpose. This happened when I was eight years old. That was one of my father's, like, uh, yeah, university friends, another teacher who had purple fireball, deep purple. And he said, that, Marco, listen to this. And he, he gave me the earphones and put on the, that title song, Fireball. And I was blown away. Of course, I didn't know anything about heavy metal as a word or words, but that was, that was the greatest stuff I had ever heard so far. So what made you become a vocalist? What kind of like stories behind that one? Well, that was basically just um, just because I'm from a very small place originally. We didn't really have players or singers there. So that even my brother, who's three and a half years older, ditched his guys and forced himself into our band, the younger guys, the kids, because we were playing better. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the thing. And when we were talking about these things with my schoolmates, that who's going to sing in the band and what's going to happen, nobody had the guts. So I figured there has to be a singer in the band. So I started singing and playing. After a while, I kind of noticed that I really like this stuff. Um, yeah, I kind of had experience already earlier. Like, well, already told you about the Deep Purple at eight, and I've told the story about Black Sabbath and reading Moomin Trolls at the age of nine. And, and then there was the time when I was about 10, 11, when Rainbow released a long live rock and roll album. That one we got, and I learned all the lyrics of the whole album. I was singing it in the backyard swings and all that when I was 11 or something. So, 13, the first school band. I guess I just kind of slipped into the role. So was Tarot like your first band that you started singing on? Yeah, kind of, because it, the, the school band and then with my brother who came to force himself into playing with us, uh, we kind of went on to build the tarot around that nucleus. So when you started singing, did you have some kind of like idols that you looked up to and, and when you started singing, did it take a long time to figure out your sort of like own unique style of singing? It, it, take, it took some while because at first I started as a mimic. I, I wanted to really to learn how to do the force and the strength and the high notes of Ronnie James Dio and Rob Halford and these kind of things. Well, Quite a lot of people agree that these are the greatest guys. So I guess they were the idols for a young guy. <laughs> and I was, yeah, like I said, I was listening to the album and learning the lyrics and and singing on. And at the same time, you kind of learn to keep the note with the other guy. You learn the language, you learn the little nuances of that. And also, well, then my father, he's, an, he's a teacher of English language, used to be, was. And from him I got this huge science fiction and such a <laughs> like science fiction fly beat me and I was started to read these things and then listening to this music and at the time when I started to understand the English better I kind of started to realize that a lot of this stuff is connected the fantasy side and the dark side and sci-fi and all that it's very prominent in heavy metal so when you started singing, were you losing like your voice all the time when you were mimicking other vocalists? It was 13, so no, I didn't. It was very high, higher than it is now. <laughs> <laughs> and, but of course, I had to build up a stamina and those albums and those songs were demanding. So yeah, before I was 20 or something, I managed to lose it and get it back quite a few times. And after that, when you kind of settle in your bodily form, then you just got to take care of it. And the voice holds. So when you started singing, was it first like doing cover songs? And, and what, at, at what point did you start doing like your own stuff and singing that? Okay, that was pretty soon. Because at first, of course, we were playing something, you know, neon nights, Finnish punk songs and all that. Uh, but I think that already in the next year or something, uh, I was starting to bring some riffs and things into the band rehearsal and trying to write some lyrics and everything was lousy of course but for a young guy I guess they were okay. 
So when you started, were you like rehearsing a lot with the voice or were you just like rehearsing only with the tarot guys when you were rehearsing with them or what kind of like memories do you have when it comes it was, to that? It was kind of both. Of course, if you had a band rehearsals, we might be playing for a long time and singing for a long time. But mostly I think the stamina that I built is that I actually was singing really a lot at home. I really got into the music, I had already gotten into different kinds of music and we're a lot when I was a younger kid and when I really got into it I, I got bitten by the fly I I was singing mom and dad would leave for work I would have school starting an hour or two I would put the album on and start singing along then I would come from school before they would get to work I would do the same thing and fuck the neighbors if you hear me screaming dig it <laughs> <laughs> okay so it, it was like that yeah so i'd say that there was for some three years there probably wasn't a day that i hadn't been singing and then when i went on to the musical high school i started taking vocal lessons to learn a nice little breathing techniques and relaxation and everything but i guess i was ruined by the metal singing already since the classical elitist teachers at 80s really didn't like my singing style so I got like I think the best that they gave me from a woke, uh, singing test was seven mostly I got six out of ten <laughs> <laughs> so so what kind of memories do you have when it comes to like recording the first album with Tarot what kind of experience it was like vocal wise did you learn a lot like about yourself in the studio or well some things that you kind of learn that if you, for instance, if you lose your voice inside one day, it can be totally workable to the next day. You, that uh, one of the most important things of keeping your voice is to rest. And I've done the things that also that I've done a show and stayed up for the whole night and then gone on to the next one and all that. That's usually when you start to get a little bit scratchy. So what kind of memories do you have when it comes to like first proper European tours? When first it comes to like European when tour. it comes to like singing, was it like a good experience where you like did you already had the stamina to do many shows in a row or were you like sort of trying to pull yourself through the tour or I was still in the 80s already when we had done the first single and maybe a couple of first albums with Tarot Boys. I was a little bit over my 20s and definitely still building the stamina because at the time when we were doing like for instance a week of shows I started to realize halfway that fuck I'm in trouble I gotta ease off I gotta ease off but then already by the time that I was in night wish and all that four nights a row no problem but I do like to have a day off after that <laughs> okay so it becomes like more and more difficult if it's like months row of shows yeah, with the rows of shows, you got to have a day off every now and then because, yeah, the voice needs to recuperate. The stuff is hard to see. So did you learn anything about like the first European tour in terms of like how to manage on tour? Were you like sleeping enough or? or... Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the one thing that I try to take care of the most. I mean, eating, drinking, of course, and, and when I'm home, I rehearse actually be rehearsing more and more lately and you know like I said take a little bit of care of your physical being because when you sing you use your physical being quite a lot it's a good strain for your lungs and for your pump ticker and of course the vocal cords and then the pipes and everything need to stretch you use your tongue muscle which is the strongest muscle in your goddamn body you use it a lot so do you normally warm up properly before the shows has has that sort of like been different during the years yeah i i used to just go and do it but later on i kind of realized that okay i'm not that young anymore so that the things are not so well oiled immediately so later on i've been starting to do some warm-ups and some vocal therapeutic exercises and all that also along with the singing. So are there like some certain drinks or foods that you wouldn't rather have before the show that you feel that it affects your vocal cords, for example, somehow? Hmm. Well, something extremely hot is not good because it always, you know, it makes the muscles swell. The liquid water in them 
gets bigger and all that. So drinking and eating something very hot before singing is not recommendable. But otherwise, I've been pretty much eating and drinking almost everything anytime until then, like, well, it's already some time ago, like 15, 20 years ago, that I got di diagnosed with a nice reflux. And then I learned also that it's way better to like eat latest about four hours before the show in order to avoid the elevator. So obviously you have been part with a lot of bands like Nightwish, mm. Northern Kings, Tarot, for example. Mm. So are there like some certain albums that you feel that you have learned most of yourself as a vocalist? Some albums that you are like most proud of singing wise? Oh, damn. That's a tough one. That is a very tough one. I mean, at the beginning of the 90s was the time that I was probably in the best shape vocally that I ever was and I never will be afterwards because they removed the pollen from the left side and since I have tight pipes and tight tongue bone they cracked something and uh, there is a there is some numb nerve damage over there so I had to work really a lot to get the voice back and the range that I used to have in the beginning of 90s is not back and I'm not expecting it to be back totally but it seems to be wide enough of a range to make some people interested <laughs> about my voice mm. and well, what was the question? I'm, it, I'm rambling on with the stories. Is there like some specific album that you can point out which you're like most proud of from your discography? Yes, yeah, so maybe maybe I would say that <laughs> that as undervalued as it is, the, the album Stigma was probably when I was in my best vocal shape. But then again, it still ain't the best album. I think that the best album we did in 2003 with Suffer Our Pleasures, that was of course when I was also trying a, a little bit more of the modern techniques, had been listening too much to Phil Anselmo. <laughs> 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 so are there like some songs on the, on the discography that you have released that you feel that they are like extremely difficult to perform like vocal wise? Are there like some tracks that you wouldn't rather now even try out live? Let me see, there are some that would be extremely hard. Yeah, like the album Stigma that I mentioned, Angels of Pain that starts the album, that's fucking high and hard. It would be trouble for the most of the vocalists I know. <laughs> oh, the good times. Anyways, and, and this is a business where you, if you let people produce you, in the band and all that, you end up digging holes for yourself because everybody always wants higher, louder, higher, louder. And yeah, so you gotta keep in mind that, okay, you're doing this song that you can do lines here and there and get a good mix of things. So what, when you were in Nightwish, did that band sort of push you also with the vocals when you were recording with them in the studio to sort of yeah. get yourself better and better yeah. and better? Yeah, actually, if I think so, I, I already did that. I already had heard too much of Phil Anselm only already doing Century Child. It can be heard there. <laughs> and after that, it sort of you changed a bit about the way you approach the vocals. Yeah, it's um, more of a more of an attitude towards vocals here. Yeah. It's like you can do quite a lot of different things, and the more you play with it, and more you go with different sounds and interpretations the more you're widening kind of your range and scale and scope at the same time, the more you try things. And the more you go out of the box, the more you learn. Uh, and Well, that's basically the trouble with the heavy metal also, since it, when it became so big, a lot of the bands come out of the woodwork that have basically learned it by listening to the other bands themselves and then some new other bands on the same genre. And that, that is a way of diminishing your, how would I say, mental gene pool. You, you really need to have a view outside of your thing in order to keep it in scope. Few questions left. And the second last one is what, what were like your parents' reactions when they heard that 
two of the brothers are forming a heavy metal band. Mm, your dad was a very musically aware. He had a hell of a collection of vinyl albums, even old some you know clay discs and the old jazz and stuff like that. So he was always positive about music and playing. Okay. And so was mom. They were very understanding, but of course we talked about it and they were very afraid that guys, you're trying to go into an area where the success is very fleeting and hard to get. Uh, but then again, young guys, we can take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> so last question, any advice that you would like to give to a young metal vocalist, anything that comes into your mind? There is, there are these two things, or would it be three? Possibly three, since I already said about sleeping. Keep the hours, eight hours, eight hours a night. And um, But then, yeah, sing as much as you can with the albums. You learn things from there, from the others too. And at the same time, keep in mind that your sound is unique. When it works with this way, it, at that angle, it doesn't have to go the same as somebody did on the album. You do it your way, with your voice and keep using it because that's the way to build the strength and the stamina. You won't win 100 meter races without running some fucking kilometers first. <laughs>